Michael, your company, Nebraska Cultures, has a product called DDS-1 Acidophilus. Can you tell us a little bit about that? What makes it different than mm -hmm. all other Acidophilus products that might be out there, all but, other probiotics right. for sure. that matter? DDS-1 is called DDS-1, uh, as we did mention before, um, because it was discovered at the Department of Dairy Science, DDS, and it was the number one strain that Dr. Shahani found and did, found that it uh, had the number one uh, properties, had strong uh, shelf life, it grew very fast. So he called it DDS-1. It's a strain of lactobacillus acidophilus. And it's been shown that it does a number of very important things in the body. It produces B vitamins and folic acid. It produces uh, lactase. It helps elevate the levels of T cells and uh, NK cells, natural killer cells, so-called natural killer cells. There is no other lactobacillus acidophilus with this kind of research work that shows that it does this many and exactly this number of beneficial properties and has this number of beneficial properties in the body. So how would a person know in trying to make a choice for a supplement to take um, that when you see the word lactobacillus mm -hmm. acidophilus, how do they know that, that they're getting this, your strain as opposed to some other strain? Well, they may not be getting the DDS-1 strain. It's possible that the DDS-1 strain could be manufactured by other manufacturers. But uh, Dr. Shahani's methods are proprietary, and we still use those methods. These are methods that he developed over 40 years of research. And based on these methods, uh, he knows, we know, that the, um, that the product produced, the lactobacillus acidophilus DDS-1 produced by these methods, produces these results. So a bacteria produced by other methods may or may not produce these same results. We, we definitely know that grown under different circumstances, the same bacteria will produce different results. So that's very important to know that it's grown under the same conditions and produced and manufactured in the same way. Um, you know, there are other proven and research strains on the market of various kinds of bacteria, acidophilus, uh, lactobacillus rhamnosus, lab, um, bifidobacterium longum, for instance. But many strains on the market are what you might think of as generic strains of bacteria, they don't really have any specific research work on that specific strain. You know, a strain of bacteria is not just the name of the bacteria, Lactobacillus acidophilus. Uh, it's like uh, the common household pet, the dog. You know, all dogs are the same genus and species, Canis familiaris. But would you rather have your house protected by a German Shepherd or protected by a Chihuahua? It's the same, same strain of, of, uh, of animal, but uh, uh, different different um, substrain, if you will. So again, how, do, how is the substrain in DDS-1 different? Can you, can you explain that a little bit more? Well, just that we know that it produces these good results when, when, when grown under the proper conditions. Uh, its you know, DNA uh, structure is slightly different than other strains of lactobacillus acidophilus, and it's uh, possible to identify that particular strain or subspecies of Lactobacillus acidophilus as DDS-1. In fact, um, there's a, you know, the Agricultural Research Service of the uh, United States of America has that uh, particular strain on deposit in its, uh, in its culture bank. Is that unusual to have? Well, it's possible to deposit any strain, mm -hmm. but it's important that there is a particular record of that strain available if someone wishes to compare it, and uh, that's an important thing to have available. You'd mentioned in one of our earlier conversations about uh, the DDS-1 being a, uh, a human strain. Yes. Could you explain that a little bit? Well, too? all strains of probiotic bacteria are not found in humans. Sometimes they're found in milk. Sometimes they're found in plants. Sometimes uh, they're even found in the soil. But the DDS-1 strain was isolated from a human source. And so, as a result, we know that it is adapted to human beings, that it, it grows well in human beings, that it will implant and uh, stay in the body at least for a while after it's consumed. Uh, as we mentioned, it's important to keep, keep the level of, of probiotic bacteria that one consumes um, um, coming in. It's important to keep that level there, otherwise the body will eventually run out of bacteria. All these bacteria are what we call transient bacteria. They don't live permanently in the gut without augmentation, if you will, without keeping them coming in. Thank you, Michael.